Hey everyone and welcome to our deep dive. We're going to be talking stealth fighters today. You know, if you're into like the latest military tech or maybe just curious about, you know, how these jets could like change the future of air combat, this is for you. Yeah, you know. We're breaking down an article. This is a fascinating topic for sure. Yeah, it's called uh, F-22 Raptor versus J-20 Mighty Dragon slash J-31 Gur Falcon. A clash of stealth titans. Wow. I know, right? Just the title. Sounds like a movie. Yeah. Like a summer blockbuster or something. Well, and, and what's interesting here is like, we're not just comparing, you know, cool planes, right? Right. This is uh, the emergence of these stealth fighters. It kind of reflects like a potential power shift on the global stage. You know, think about China's uh, rapid technological advancements and what that could mean, particularly in regions like the South China Sea. Okay. So before we get to like, you know, a hypothetical showdown. Sure. Let's let's understand why stealth matters so much in the 21st century. Like, what is it about stealth that's so important now? Okay, so imagine a chess game where one player can see all the pieces, but the other one completely in the dark. Oh, wow. That's kind of the advantage stealth offers, right, in modern warfare. So by, like, minimizing their radar signature, these fighters can avoid detection, giving them uh, the element of surprise. Okay. This allows for something called a first strike advantage, where you can, like, potentially cripple your opponent before they even know you're there. So it's a total game changer for air combat strategy. Yeah, so it's like playing hide and seek, but at supersonic speeds. Yeah. And the stakes are a lot higher than just bragging rights. Exactly. Wow. Okay. Now let's introduce our contenders. Okay. First, we have the veteran, the F-22 Raptor, developed by the United States. It's a product of the Cold War, designed to counter the Soviet Union's top fighters. It entered service in 2005, demonstrating America's technological edge at the time. And then, this is where things get interesting, I think. The U.S. stopped producing the F-22 back in 2011. Why would they halt production of like what many considered the best fighter jet in the world. Well, this decision uh, triggered a major debate with, you know, strong arguments on both sides. Oh, okay. Some argued that the F-22, while powerful, was just incredibly expensive to build and maintain. The focus was shifting towards counterinsurgency operations in the Middle East, where stealth wasn't as crucial, you know, as it was in a potential conflict with a technologically advanced adversary. Hmm. Others believed that the F-35, uh, designed for versatility and affordability, was a better fit for the evolving nature of warfare. So they're kind of like saying, we need a workhorse, not just a show pony, even if that show pony was like a top performer. That's one way to look at it, yeah. Now, entering the arena, we have the J-20 Mighty Dragon from China. Oh, yeah. This fighter, with its sleek design and... Uh, imposing name, made its first flight in 2011 and entered service in 2017. Okay. It's a symbol of China's ambition to challenge American military dominance and close the technology gap. And, they're, and from what I've read, they're still producing the J-20, right? It seems clear that China sees this aircraft as like a key element in their future military plans. Absolutely. And then there's the wild card, the FC-31 Jir Falcon, also developed by China. Think of it as their answer to the F-35, a multi-role fighter designed to be more affordable and suitable for export to other countries. It also holds the potential for carrier operations, which could significantly impact naval warfare. Okay, so we've got like the seasoned pro, the ambitious newcomer, and the up-and-comer with global aspirations. Well, let's go beyond like the hype and delve into like the design philosophies behind these incredible machines. What were the, the driving forces behind each aircraft's development? Let's start with the F-22, okay? The designers went all in on stealth. They prioritized making it as invisible to radar as possible, even if it meant pushing the boundaries of technology and accepting higher costs. The result is a fighter with an incredibly small radar cross-section, making it incredibly difficult to detect. So like every detail from that diamond-shaped wing to the canted tail fins and internal weapons bays is all about minimizing that radar signature, right? Right. Like they obsessed over every angle and curve to make it practically vanish from enemy radar screens. Precisely. They even shaped the engine inlets and exhaust nozzles to reduce its radar signature. This commitment to stealth, however, came with a pretty hefty price tag. Yeah. Now compare that to the J-20. While it incorporates stealth features, some experts believe that the Chinese designers prioritize different capabilities. Okay. They might have focused on uh, long-range strike capabilities and achieving stealth in specific radar bands over achieving complete invisibility. So it's not necessarily that the J-20 is less stealthy, but maybe it's stealthy in ways that are more aligned with China's specific strategic goals. Exactly. Okay. For example, the J-20's canards, those small wings near the nose, might improve maneuverability, but could potentially compromise stealth at certain radar frequencies. Hmm. 
This suggests a different set of priorities compared to the F-22's, you know, all-out stealth approach. It's fascinating how these design choices reflect each country's kind of military strategy. Right. And what about the FC-31? Where does it fit in? The FC-31 was designed with affordability and exportability in mind. Okay. This likely means that some compromises were made in terms of stealth compared to the F-22 or even the J-20. Think of it as a more, you know, budget-friendly option for countries that want stealth capabilities but can't afford the top-tier fighters. So we have a range of options from, like, the ultimate stealth predator right. to a more accessible yet still portent stealth fighter. But let's get to the question everyone's probably wondering. How do these jets stack up in terms of performance and firepower? That's where things get really interesting. Let's start with the F-22. Okay. One of its standout features is its super cruise capability. Oh yeah. This means it can maintain supersonic speeds exceeding Mach 1 without using its afterburners. It can cruise at Mach 1.82, giving it a significant speed and range advantage over most other fighters. So imagine you're a pilot in the F-22. You need to respond to a threat like hundreds of miles away. Most fighters would have to like blast their afterburners, you know, guzzling fuel to get there quickly. But you, you kick in super cruise, reaching supersonic speeds while conserving fuel. That's a massive advantage in like a long range fight. Precisely. Wow. And it doesn't stop there. The F-22 also boasts thrust vectoring nozzles, which allow the pilot to direct the engine exhaust, giving it incredible agility in a dogfight. It's like a, it's like a ballet dancer with afterburners. Right. Amazing. Okay. Now let's turn to the J-20. Okay. It's designed with like long range engagements in mind. Its primary weapon is the PL-15, an air to air missile with an impressive range of over 200 kilometers. This is a game changer in terms of strategy. Imagine the J-20 lurking just beyond visual range, launching a volley of PL-15s that could potentially cripple enemy support aircraft uh, far behind the front lines. It significantly expands the battle space and creates a whole new set of challenges for its opponents. That's a serious threat, right? Oh, yeah. It's not just about, like, engaging enemy fighters. It's about targeting the entire support structure that keeps those fighters in the air. Right. And I've heard that the J-20 is expected to get even more powerful with the development of its WS-15 engine. That's right. The WS-15 is expected to significantly enhance the J-20's performance. It could potentially provide super cruise capabilities and boost its overall maneuverability, closing the gap with the F-22. It seems like China is determined to challenge the U.S. for air superiority. And what about the FC-31? What do we know about its capabilities? We have less information available about the FC-31, but its design suggests a focus on versatility and carrier operations. Hmm. It's intended to be a jack-of-all-trades, capable of handling a variety of missions, from air-to-air -air combat to ground attack. Its potential for carrier operations makes it a particularly interesting wildcard, especially as China expands its naval power in the Pacific. Imagine a Chinese carrier battle group equipped with squadrons of FC-31s patrolling the Pacific. It would significantly enhance their ability to project power far from their shores. And that brings us to the big question. Who would win in a fight? Exactly. If these stealth titans were to face off in a hypothetical showdown, who would come out on top? That's the question on everyone's mind, right? But, you know, it's important to remember that modern air combat is incredibly complex. It's not like, uh, you know, a simple video game where the jet with like the flashiest specs automatically wins. So it's not just about who has the bigger guns or the faster plane. Exactly. Victory in a real world engagement would depend on countless factors. You know, the skills and experience of the pilots, their specific mission objectives, uh, the electronic warfare environment, the terrain, the weather conditions, and even a bit of luck. It sounds like there are so many variables that it's almost impossible to like predict a clear winner. But let's indulge in a little bit of speculation. If the F-22 and the J-20 were to face off, what would be like their strengths and weaknesses? Well, in a close range dogfight, the F-22 with its exceptional maneuverability and advanced sensors would likely have an edge. Imagine it dancing around the J-20, using its thrust vectoring nozzles to outmaneuver its opponent, then delivering a decisive blow with a sidewinder missile. It's almost like a ballet in the sky but with deadly consequences. However, we can't forget about the J-20's long-range missiles. If it can exploit any weaknesses in the F-22's stealth or its supporting systems, those long-range engagements could be devastating. Remember those PL-15 missiles we talked about? Right. The J-20 could potentially cripple the F-22 before it even gets close enough for a dogfight. So it's a classic battle of speed and agility versus long-range firepower. And what about the FC-31? How could it factor into this, like, hypothetical showdown? That's where things get even more interesting. What if the FC-31 enters the fray as part of like a coordinated attack? 
working alongside the J-20, it could overwhelm the F-22 with sheer numbers, creating a multi-layered tactical challenge that's incredibly difficult to counter. So we're not just talking about like one-on-one -on -one dogfights anymore. We're talking about electronic warfare jamming, support aircraft, and like coordinated attacks across multiple domains. That's the reality of modern warfare. It's a complex and constantly evolving battle space. Okay, so maybe we can't definitively say who would win in a hypothetical dogfight, but there's another point in the article that I found fascinating. It mentions, like, the crucial role of pilot training in modern air combat. Oh, absolutely. Even with the most advanced technology, a skilled pilot can make all the difference. Absolutely. Pilot training is incredibly demanding, both physically and mentally. Imagine having to make split-second decisions while flying at supersonic speeds under immense pressure with enemy aircraft trying to take you down. Yeah, that sounds pretty intense. It takes a special kind of person to become a fighter pilot. They have to master complex aircraft systems, learn advanced tactics, and develop a deep understanding of both their own aircraft and their potential adversaries. Their ability to uh, think strategically, adapt to changing situations, and maintain their composure under pressure can be the deciding factor in a battle. It sounds like the human element is still crucial, even in the age of like advanced technology. Yes. And that brings up another question that's been on my mind. What about drones? How are they changing the landscape of air combat? Drones are undoubtedly having a significant impact on warfare. Okay. They offer advantages in terms of cost, endurance, and risk reduction. You don't need a pilot to be physically present in a drone, which means you're not risking a human life in every mission. So it's like playing a video game, but with real-world consequences. In some ways, yes. Drones can be controlled remotely, allowing operators to conduct missions from afar. This opens up new possibilities for warfare, but it also raises important ethical and strategic considerations. Yeah, I could see how drones could be incredibly effective, but it's also a bit unsettling to think about machines making life or death decisions on the battlefield. That's a valid concern, and it's something that military strategists and ethicists are grappling with as drone technology continue to advance. It's a complex issue with no easy answers. So it seems like the future of air combat is moving towards like a combination of manned and unmanned systems. Yeah. We'll still have pilots in the cockpits of those high performance jets, but they'll be working alongside increasingly sophisticated drones. Exactly. And as these technologies evolve, it's crucial to consider the ethical and strategic implications of their use. We need to ensure that these powerful tools are used responsibly and in accordance with international laws and norms. Okay, we've talked about hypothetical dogfights, pilot training, and the rise of drones. What are some other key takeaways that we should consider as we, like, wrap up this deep dive? I think it's important to remember that the future of air combat is not just about individual aircraft. It's about integrated systems, sophisticated networks, and the ability to operate effectively in what's called a multi-domain battle space. Multi-domain battle space. That sounds like something out of a science fiction movie. It's the reality of modern warfare. Think about it. Air, land and sea, space, and cyberspace, all these domains are interconnected. A conflict in one domain can quickly spill over into others. So it's not just about, like, dogfights in the sky anymore. Exactly. It's about controlling information, disrupting enemy networks, coordinating attacks across multiple domains, and leveraging every available advantage. It sounds incredibly complex, like playing 3D chess while simultaneously managing a social media account and fending off cyber attacks. That's a pretty accurate description of the challenges facing military commanders in the 21st century. Okay, my head is officially spinning, but I'm starting to get a better grasp of like the big picture here. It's not just about the jets themselves, it's about the entire system, the strategy, the technology, and the human element all working together. Exactly, and that brings us to a final provocative thought for you to consider. We've been focusing on the rivalry between the U.S. and China, but what about other players in the global arena? You mean like Russia, India, or even smaller nations that are developing their own advanced military technologies? Precisely. The global balance of power is becoming increasingly multipolar, with multiple nations vying for influence and dominance. This makes the landscape even more complex and unpredictable. So it's not just a, like, two-horse race anymore? Not at all. It's a dynamic and evolving playing field, with new players emerging and old alliances shifting. The future of air combat is going to be shaped by a multitude of factors, and it's going to be fascinating to see how it all unfolds. This deep dive has been an incredible journey. We've gone from comparing stealth fighters to exploring the broader implications of technological advancements and the evolving nature of warfare. It's been a pleasure discussing this with you. And to our listeners, we hope this has given you a deeper understanding of the complexities of air combat in the 21st century. But remember, this is just a starting point. There's so much more to explore. So keep those minds sharp 
stay curious and keep asking those tough questions. You know, as we kind of wrap up our deep dive into these stealth fighters, there's one thing we haven't talked much about, and I think it's, you know, it's a big deal electronic warfare. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we can get caught up in all the cool designs and the impressive specs, but there's this whole invisible battle going on right alongside the physical one. Right. And electronic warfare can totally change the game. Like, it, it can determine who wins even before a single missile is fired. Okay, so for those of us who, you know, aren't like military strategists, break it down. What exactly is electronic warfare? It's kind of like, imagine a high-tech battle of wits, but it's fought in the electromagnetic spectrum. Oh, okay. It's all about using different technologies to mess with the enemy's electronics. Think like radar, their communications, navigation systems, anything like that. You could jam their radar so they can't even see you, or you could send them fake signals, make them think they're being attacked from somewhere else. Oh, wow. So it's like playing hide-and-seek, but with radio waves and electronic signals instead of bushes and trees. Gotcha. And the stakes are a lot higher, too. Oh, for sure. I mean, if you win the electronic warfare battle, you can basically blind the enemy, mess up their whole plan, and even knock out their defenses. That gives you a huge advantage right off the bat. So it's not just about, like, having the most powerful jet. It's about controlling the information right? Making sure the enemy can't see what you're doing or talk to each other. Exactly. Electronic warfare adds a whole other layer of strategy to modern air combat. It's not a simple game anymore. Wow. This whole deep dive has been eye-opening. We started with stealth tech, then compared the different jets, talked about how important pilots are, and now this electronic warfare. It's obvious that the future of air combat is going to keep changing fast, especially with all the new tech coming out. No doubt. And as that technology keeps getting better, we're going to see even more innovation, probably stuff we can't even imagine right now. Stealth tech will be harder to detect, AI will start making decisions, and new weapons like hypersonic missiles will come into play. It sounds like we're on the edge of a whole new kind of war, where it's not so clear where the real world ends and the digital world begins. That's a great way to put it. And as all this happens, we really need to think about what it means, you know, ethically. Make sure these technologies are used for good and that everyone follows the rules. Well said. So for everyone listening, thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We hope you have a better understanding of what modern air combat is really about. It's been a pleasure. And remember, this is just the start. There's always more to learn. The world of military technology never stops changing. So keep reading, keep asking questions, and stay curious. That's the key. The future is what we make it. Couldn't agree more. This has been The Deep Dive. Until next time.